وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين. The student of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for the great lesson today in the the masjid. Great having you with us in the community. You're welcome, mashallah, anytime. This is your house. This is your community. So that we're live and we're in his house in San Diego, and this is his library. I saw it in the background of sometimes when we talk and we have him on debates. So I wanted to do a tour. There's so many books, and you get like pan around. It's just it's very beautiful in here. And want to learn more? You know, th- <clears throat> these streams we have like dumb humor sometimes. You guys complain when I just look at Discord memes all the time. So I think it's important. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of the streams are really low IQ and kind of ret- um, can I say retarded in your house? Yeah, yeah, yeah go for They're it. They're really retarded streams sometimes. So this isn't YouTube. This isn't YouTube. <laughs> so we could have high IQ streams and then go over some books. We had a great podcast today. I recommend you guys check that out. And I was learning today, he had a great Q&A and a great lesson in the, in the Majid. He had pretty much like, a, are you an Imam? Yeah. So yeah, you were, do you have to, how do you become an Imam? So an Imam is really a leader of a community. But like for myself, uh, Alhamdulillah, I, I studied, like I went to scholars, I studied with them. I got my master's in Hadith and things. And then leading the community, this is what an Imam is, right? So we have other brothers that lead the prayer as well. But, you know, coordinating all the all the lessons, you know fixing issues, all that kind of stuff. That's what an imam does, you know. So, alhamdulillah. Yeah, it was great to see him to run that lesson today. And you, you had everything, um, you had like a, a lesson plan basically. And you, you just went off for like about an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, everybody was paying attention. It was a uh, packed majid. It was like, it was not a space empty on the on the rug on a Saturday night. I was funny thinking there, like, is it Saturday night when we were on the it car is, leaving? Yeah. I'm like, I could be in the club right now, but... Uh, Mashallah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, our community, Majdribah, it's a good community. We get a lot of people that drive from LA, from far away. They come every week. Uh, our lessons are, and I'll show you a little bit when we go through the books. It's not just about talking. It's the research of making sure the authenticity of the narration, it takes a lot of time. And I, I spend that because I don't want to teach something that's not authentic. And every narration, I go and check it then. Uh, and I'll show you, inshallah, as we go through it, how, how long that takes. You know, Because, like a lot of Christians, it's just about jumping, ha hu ha hu, a lot of people. But as Muslims, we need to make sure that what we're saying is actually what the Prophet said, actually what's in the Quran, through checking the change of narration. And that's a beautiful science that Islam has. Yeah, and you could definitely see that uh, Sheikh Uthman does the research. He walks the walks uh, and talks the talk. Definitely taking a lot of time. You barely sleep. That was the funny thing. Like after last night, we were, we were spending all day together, and then you said you went to bed at like five a.m. Yeah. And then you, you have Nine. kids. You homeschool. Your, I don't yeah. want to say too much information, but yeah, yeah, yeah. homeschool my kids. You, you homeschool know, your kids. I, I, you know, I get a, I get a lot of support from the family. I let award my wife, my mom. Um, I couldn't do it without them, but it's a lot of, lot of work. You know, it's five a.m. We prayed Fajr, went to sleep, and then. Uh, 8 a.m. I had the people doing construction, so we're up. So <laughs> that's all the sleep I got. And you work a regular job. I work a regular job. You're, you're doing, you, you barely have any time to sleep, so it's pretty admirable to see how much dedication there is. And yeah. it's just a reminder, like, Chad, where how, you guys, I don't know how old you are, you get to put your age in the chat. I'm 24, and I'm, I get sleepy. I'm here drinking a Red Bull because I need to stay awake right now. I'm not sponsored by them. This is bad for you. Don't drink this stuff. But I, I don't drink Red Bull. He doesn't. He's yeah. just up. He just has like a, a tea once in a while. Tea. And, I love tea. And yeah. the power of Allah is keeping you going. So. We ask Allah for help. All right. So we're going to start. Okay. Uh, one thing important. Anybody can buy books. Anybody can just throw money at it. That's not the point. Each one of these books, I've spent at least a few hours, some of them days and months, researching the best print, the most accurate according to the manuscript. I consult other scholars. I, I consult my teachers. So each one of these, has, there's a lot of mind that's been, you know, time and effort that's gone into making sure it's the best book. So even if the size of the library isn't the biggest in the world, the, the value is in the quality of the books. So I've organized everything in a way that it has a logical flow. So these three shelves, onwards all the way across, this is all Quran and Quran explanations. Right? So this... Like, for example... But who wrote this? So these are different authors, right? This is a book called Ibn Kathir. Right? It's a very famous Quran explanation 
this is a different print of it, the same book. You'll see some of the volumes out because I, I actually, this is, a, this is a working library, it's not for show, it's for use, you know, so some of the books are out being used. So this is Tafsir Al-Qur'an uh, Al-Adim, the Tafsir of the Qur'an by the great scholar Ibn Kathir. And this print, like check out how beautiful that print is, right? So, like the colors, the font, the, I like, I love Where do you the, get all these books? Oh, all over the world. <laughs> Saudi, Jordan, Pakistan, Kuwait, Malaysia. Uh, I go to book fairs. Uh, I sit hours and hours at night. Me and my seven-year-old daughter, we research different books. Uh, I speak to different scholars. This must have cost like almost thousands of dollars in oh, years of research this to cost, find all of this. Uh, this cost more than a Lamborghini. Wow. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, but to me, this is better than a Lamborghini. Lamborghini can't get you closer to Allah. No. But knowing this knowledge and practice is invaluable. It does. Yeah, exactly. True boxing thing. Thank you for the five. May Allah protect you both. Inshallah, one day we'll witness uh, Sheikh Sneeko. One day. Well, I mean, Inshallah. after this library, I He's probably beginning. Could be. That's it. Okay. I told you, the offer out there, inshallah, I'm going to start teaching you, going to get you on that knowledge, inshallah. So, if you look at the book, this is not just the book, but the research done in checking all the narrations, checking how the... See, the Bible, for example, we don't even know who the authors of many of the books are, right? We looked at that earlier. Yeah. There's big gaps. In hadith, we wouldn't allow that, right? So, this research and this print is what I look for, of the best research. And this, that of Najosi's, Taba'a Thani, the second Taba'a, is this is the best uh, research print. Uh, Dr. Hikmat uh, Yasin, amazing work that's been done on this. So each one of these books, I've spent hours and hours and hours trying to find, make sure what is the most accurate. So these are all commentaries of the Qur'an, and they're different styles. Like these commentaries are on narrations. So this is a book that's put together by a group of scholars. It's 24 volumes. Where is this from? This is, these are all from different parts of the world. Like these are, this is from Saudi Arabia that I got. Um, this one I also got from Saudi. Some of them from Kuwait. Some from Qatar. Uh, but this is amazing work because what they did is they went through all the old classic books and collected any narration, any hadith, any statement of a Sahabi. Uh, and then they put it there and they put all the references. So you see this is, this is the hadith on Sahih. This is the authentic narration, right? And then it gives the reference to the book. So then I can go to the actual hadith book and pull it as well. Okay. So this is Quran explanations all the way. These are more linguistic explanations here. Looking at the Arabic grammar. Of it. So hadith is all explanations of what's directly written hadith in the Quran. Hadith are the statements of the Prophet. Are statements of the Prophet. Yeah, so this is the but Quran. Why would the, why would the statements of the Prophet not just be all in the Quran? Because the Quran is not the words of the Prophet. The Quran is the, the words, words of from Allah. Allah. Okay. Yes, those are not the words of the Prophet. Hadith is the words of the Prophet, right? So this is his personal opinions. His statements, his actions, his, his statements, his life, okay. what he said, what he did, what he approved of. Qawl, fi'l, iqrar al-Nabi. The, the action, statement, and approvals of the Prophet wasallam. That is the Sunnah. But if there's a verse in the Quran, and the Prophet explained it, then these books of Tafsir will capture that. Right? The, the verse, the, the, the companion says, this verse was about war, this was about peace, this was about this. So we know the context. So unlike the Bible, where a lot of times you don't have any statements authentic from the disciples there. Right? There's no chain of narrators. Mm -hmm. In Quran, if you want to know, if you spend the time and research, you can find it. Right? And that's beautiful. This is something unique to Islam, is this tradition of called the Sanad, the chain of narrations. Right? Is there anything like th that's equivalent of this library to something in, like in Judaism? Do they have... So Judaism, they have a lot of rabbinic writings. I've been to some huge libraries, but they don't have this chain of narrations. The the Old Testament, or you know, the, the first five books being the Torah and so on, there is no chain tying it to Musa, a.s. We do. That's unique to Islam. And that's why you can preserve Islam better than any other religious tradition in the world. Now, these are linguistic looking at the original Arabic grammar. This is another thing for the viewers to know. We don't have a manuscript of the Bible in Ar Aramaic, the language of Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. The earliest manuscripts are in Koinaic Greek, earliest semi-complete being 4th century. This Quran is revealed and preserved in the original language. Like, like you know, if you speak uh, Tagalog, for example, and you say a word or a statement, Como there you go. When you translate it into English, it's going to lose some meaning. Right. If you translate it now into Spanish from the English, it's going to lose more meaning. But we have the Quran, Inna Quranan Arabiya. Allah says that we reveal the Quran in a clear Arabic language. 
So we have an original, and then we have the original grammar from the classic Arabic, which is called Fusha. Can you still understand speak, that if you speak modern Arabic? Would that still make sense? Yeah. Like the news and books are written in classic Arabic. So you I, speak this type of Arabic? I do, yeah. I speak classic Quran. Can we Arabic. hear something? Can you speak the language of Arabic, the language of beautiful, the language of beautiful, the language of beautiful? Okay. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, I said, how are you? Okay. We speak in the Arabic, the pure, classic, uh, eloquent Arabic language. Uh, Camel Jockey, thanks for the 10. May God bless you, Sheikh Uthman and Brother Sneeko. I don't want the chat to forget Muslims still uh, mess with Nick Fuentes, Fuentes 2024. And he will do a debate with Sheikh Uthman. Ready when he is. Inshallah. So, Ma- let's I'm continue, here. let's continue. So these are linguistic uh, tafsir, right? Now, if we keep going, this is a very interesting... Uh, tafsir. This is one by subject, right? So if you, if you, it's not just the Quran verse by verse, but you look up different subjects, it'll give you all the verses in the Quran on a particular subject, right? So, uh, you know, let's say you want to know about the tiru, yani those nawafil and those additional prayers and things like that, you look it up, it'll give you all the verses, it'll give you the linguistic meaning. So it's a it's a tafsir based by subject, mawdu' by subject. This is the book I was showing you earlier, for example. And this is from Kuwait. Um, and what they did is they made uh, the Qur'an with an explanation of the different styles of recitation. To show that from one Qur'an, those are all just different styles of reciting. So it gives you an in-depth understanding that even and how to pronounce things in a different accent has been preserved. Right? Now, this... Up here, uh, this is going to be a very special book, which is called Tafsir Sa'd. I usually have. Can you a, help? Yeah, I usually have a step ladder, but you want to get this one? Right, yeah. mm-hmm. You're taller than you. Tall genetics. <laughs> Mashallah. This is heavy. Yes, it is. <sighs> this is. Uh, let me put this down. There's a very famous scholar, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Nasir Al Sa'di. He was the teacher of Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen. He wrote a very simple to understand tafsir. And now it's been translated into English. Very hard to find for a long time. I couldn't find it in English. Alhamdulillah, I found it. I bought it. And this is a gift to you. Free. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. This <laughs> heavy book. <Yeah. laughs> but this is a very good tafsir. tafsir when you said you're going to give me a book, I didn't think you were going to give me 10. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And this is a very light reading. So is so, it? Yeah, it is. No, it's yeah. not. It's <laughs> very. This is <laughs> this is light reading for me. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, this is a very simple tafsir. You can read it. You don't. This is to simple. Work. This is simple. How long yeah. did that take you, Sheikh, to finish? Uh, this in Arabic, this is one thick volume. It's very easy. You, know, you just read through it. Yeah, it's easy. It's all uh, but here, I mean, if you look at these kinds of. This is gonna tafsir. be tough to carry the suitcase. Do you have space? <laughs> you, you, you yeah, space, space, looking at me, bro. Yeah. You got right? space? <laughs> no, I don't. Allah will make space, inshallah. No, right? Inshallah. But this is a very good tafsir. This is the later print. The earlier print sometimes had issues, but this is a. I spent a lot of time trying to find this, and inshallah, you'll benefit from it. So, okay. Much, but but there is a condition. You got to read it. I'll read it. All right. There I'm you go. It. Allahu Akbar. Uh, Allah, so we'll put it down for you for Whoa. now. You, did, you think you're going to go empty-handed from here, huh? So, the second, now three shells, this is all hadith. So, again, there's always a logical flow in my library, right? So, this here is the famous six books, right? Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawud, Ibn Majah, Tirmidhi, and Nisa'i, and their explanations. So, so Fath al-Bari of Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, Fath al-Bari of Ibn Hajar al-Sqalani, the Shuruh of Sahih Muslim by al Nabawi. These are different manuscript prints of Bukhari itself. This is the most accurate that I have found in accordance to the manuscripts of Al-Bukhari. This is all the Fahras, the table of contents. But you can see this is one book. And I am very passionate about good prints. So you can see it's a cream color. If you read a lot, this is actually easier on the eyes. You can see how clear the font is. You can see all the research that's been put in to explain about the difference in manuscripts and so on to show the accuracy of what we're preserving. So this is Sahih al-Bukhari, the most authentic book of hadith as we know. These are all different explanations of it. Um, This is 
Abu Dawood and its explanation called Un Ma'bud, a Tirmidhi and its explanation. So even if you're not Muslim, you have to appreciate the scholarly academic work the great scholars of Islam have done. You have to. There's a lot of Christians upset in the chat, but you have to admit that this is extremely impressive and the dedication to preserving <laughs> the original text is... What are they upset about? <laughs> the fact that we have our religion preserved? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the, the, I mean, people in the chat are saying, like, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. Uh, that, regardless, even... I if, love we, Jesus, too! We love Jesus. <laughs> love Peace Jesus. and blessings be upon him. But, but you see, it, it's upsetting them, but it's okay. Let's, uh, uh, you know what? Hate if you want to hate. This is Sunan al-Nisa'i, Ibn Majah, all the different books here. Can I ask you, why did you decide to give this uh, light reading out of everything in this library? So I, I thought about something that can help you at your level. You're, you're, alhamdulillah, you're beginning. And uh, it's in English. You know? okay. So uh, this tafsir, tafsir Sheikh Abdul Rahman Nasir al-Sa'di, um, it's very easy to understand. Is it? It's a light reading. This yeah. is not. This is light reading. This is light reading. Yeah. yeah. Is, I mean, if I, if I gave you this fifty-four volume book here, that would be some heavy reading, right? <laughs> so, so uh, this is light reading, and and it doesn't go into a lot of the different opinions and things. So this is something very easy, even at a beginning level. I thought a lot about what to give you, because you know you're my guest, and as a Muslim, okay. we, we honor our guests, and I couldn't think of a better gift than knowledge. So, inshallah, you will take it. Mashallah. And if, yeah, I, we'll take it. if I gave you a deeper book, like an Arabic book, or like I have books in Pashto, I have books in Urdu, I have books in Arabic, uh, I have a few books in English, not a lot, um, then it would be difficult. But this is in English, it's an e sitting around. Yeah, but what do you think? Because uh, I was speaking to our, our good friend Zerka, and, uh, <laughs> the Christian. Uh, he, he loves to do He's a Christian? He, well, he, I mean, he loves. He's a defender of Christianity. Oh, yeah, he's a, the sword. He says he likes to do cocaine and read the Bible. Uh, uh, what, what do you think about intoxicating yourself before doing a bunch no, of reading? No, no. In Islam, you can't be drunk. You can't be coked out. You can't be cracked out. You can't be doing meth. You got to be in your senses to read the words of Allah. The Bible is the words of man, right? So you can read any way you want. Oh. But the the Quran is the words of Allah. So I can't do cocaine and read. No, you can't. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta stay. You can do some tea. You can have some tea and read. Okay. Some green tea. Hey. Nice and relaxing. Can I snort the tea? No, no, no. You, right. can, you can drink it. Though. I'll drink it. I'll let you take some sugar with it though. No keto here. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the second uh, thing is the third shelves. Three shelves here, all hadith. Now these this section. Is all books on checking the authenticity of hadith. Like Sheikh Albani's work, Ibn Hajar Asqalani's works. So this is all here. These are explanations. Those are checking to see if the hadith is authentic. These books, as you can see, are quite large on the different books of hadith. This is all hadith going around. Now from here, all the way down to there, are explanations of one book of hadith called Bulugh Al-Maram of Ibn Hajar Asqalani. These are explanations of a book called Radha Salihin. So this is organized in a logical way. So the book of Hadith and its explanations and different types of books of Hadith. Now what I want to show you here, this is not something I did for this uh, walkthrough. This is something that I was doing. I'm doing a research right now about the narrations that have to do with music in Islam. So this is a book uh, of a scholar named Al-Hakim. Uh, of course he was from... Uh, 400 to 600 something Hijri, so I mean 300 to 400 Hijri, so very very early scholar of Islam. He wrote a book. I have a really good print of it, but what I'm doing is I'm actually going through and checking. So what I did, and this is important for your viewers, whether you're Christian, Jewish, atheist, Muslim, you got to appreciate this. The statement of the Prophet, or of this here, this being Ibn Mas'ud, is mentioned with the entire chain of narrators. From when it was written down, all the way to the companion, and some of them all the way to the Prophet, peace be upon him. Every name is there. So what I did is I got this, I found this, then I came over here. These are the biographies of those scholars who narrated hadith. Oh, wow. Yeah. So each one of them, I looked them up. <laughs> right? This is a book called Siyara Alam Nubala. You can see it's 30, uh, it's 20, uh, 30, 30 volumes right here. Right? This is where I found a lot of them. So I went through them and found each one of these. As you can see, I've marked them and found what did the contemporaries say about him? How good was his memory? How was his moral character? So we can confirm. So this took me a long time because it's not just, okay, I read the hadith, but I went through the chain. Then I looked up each one's biography to make sure that this is authentic. Right? 
This is what I do for all the narrations. Like today in the Dars, you, you heard me say, this is Sahih, it's mentioned in this book. So this takes hours and hours and hours of research, but at least I can make sure that I'm not just saying, you know, somebody said. You know, I want to make sure when I say the Prophet said something, peace and blessings be upon him, we're sure he actually said it. Mm -hmm. And if there's anybody in this chain that's weak in his memory, or his moral character, or there's a break in the chain, will not accept that as Sahih. That will no longer be authentic. So this is where my master's is in, in checking hadith and things, and this is really fun. I love doing this. I love doing this more than people love going to clubs and dancing and all that. It's Saturday so, night, and we're in the it library. Is. And yeah. this, this is where it's happening. This is the club. <laughs> it's lit. <laughs> This is, this, is, this is where you're going to find for lighting. Yeah. So these books here are books on the science of hadith. They're biographies. Uh, these are weak narrators, so we know about them. These are all Arabic language, grammar, uh, different Arabic dictionaries. Uh, this here is a section dedicated to Bibles, uh, Jewish scriptures, uh, books about the Bible, books refuting the Bible, books trying to confirm the Bible, uh, mostly by non-Muslim authors. Mm. This, of course, is my famous Bible, that infamous if you're a Christian. <laughs> this is the kryptonite to all you guys. Mm -hmm. um, this we talked about earlier. Um, What's the famous one? Ma uh, Leviticus 1332 or Matthew 13? Matthew, yeah, Mark. Mark 1332, yeah. Um, here you have books that are written by Christian authors, study Bibles, Arabic Bibles, Persian Bibles, Greek Bibles, uh, Hebrew, English, uh, Tanakh, um, Dead Sea Scrolls, research on that. Um, I have also sections about Hinduism, Buddhism, but let's go. Th this is uh, different research, different languages. Now, if we come to this side, this entire top shelf are all books of fatawa, of Islamic rulings by different scholars like Sheikh Ibn al uh, this one from the Qayyim, that one you see in the blue. It's probably the largest book I have. Um, and that award, one of our very good brothers, he's in Utah, Abu Abdullah. He's the one that uh, got this from me from Kuwait. Um, so these are scholarly rulings, right? So you can look up a subject and find the scholarly rulings and their evidences. This section here, from here, all the way to down there, is what we call fiqh, jurisprudence, right? Islamic rulings, how to pray, how to fast, what is the evidence of that? the different schools of thought. This here is Hanbali school of thought. Over there we have Hanafi starts. This is Shafi'i, this is Maliki, this is other madhahib like Dahiri, or Muhalla, and Shawkani. These are different researches on different uh, subjects particularly. From here starts the history section. So this is like I was saying biographies. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a Dhahabi amazing work, a Siyar Alam al this is a book called Bidaya wa Nihaya of Ibn Kathir, the same one who wrote that Quran explanation. Great scholar. These are all, from here onward, these are all biographies of the Prophet, peace be upon him, all the way down here. So from the earliest to the later, um, I do unboxings of books, you can see sometimes, so those are fun things. Um, instead of unboxing stupid things like shoes and stuff, we unbox and educate people about books. These are books about the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, their biographies and about them, Ibn Hajar Asqalani, al Isaba. These are other history books. Here I have medicine books. This was actually written by my grandfather uh, on homeopathy. Oh, really? Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Qazi Ahmed Sayyid. He was my grandfather from my mother's side. This is on homeopathic medicine. But we have Islamic medicine. So this is has the cures to cancer in here? And it actually does talk about what you can take for cancer. Right. I mean, cures in the hands of Allah, but well, it does talk about that. These, this is Ibn al-Qayyim's Tib al This is what Big Farmer does not want you to read. Big Farmer doesn't want you to read any of these. These are prophetic medicine books. Um, this is dream interpretation. So the Islamic science. Really? How, yes. Yeah, it's really fun science, and very few people are... Actually, Do you know anything about dream interpretations? Chat, what, what's a common, what's a dream that you've had? I want to hear some themes and maybe we could decipher them quickly. Uh, the way dream interpretation Islam works is it's individuals. So we have to know about you because okay. what you see in a dream will have an effect based on your life. So one of the great scholars, the earliest Ibn Sirin, he would sit with somebody from the morning till the noon to first ask them and then he would interpret their dreams. So we have evidences from the Qur'an and Hadith what certain things in dreams mean, but it's going to be to the individual. 
What is it? Do you know what it means when you have extremely vivid dreams where you're you really believe that you are there? So it depends, right? Some of those are going to be warnings from Allah, uh, depending on what you see, like what colors, what animals, uh, like somebody seeing their beard being shaved or somebody seeing uh, killing a snake. Every one of those has a meaning. What does the killing the snake mean? Well, so that's not the way it works, right? It has, it has to, to do, do with, with your person? life, right? Okay. Because a snake can represent different things. Right. And we'll go to evidences, not just opinions, right? But it, it takes time. But that's why it's a science in Islam, right? This from here is about jinn and magic, right? So about things that affect people from the unseen, like there's a creation called the jinn. A lot of people think ghosts or whatever, possessions, those are jinn. And in Islam we have evidences about when and how. Um, um, someday, inshallah, if I get some time, I'm going to write a book on it as well, where we're going to document uh, Western documented incidences of jinn and newspapers, articles and all that. And magic and all that kind of stuff. From here onward, these are all creedal works, what we call aqidah in Islam. And I've organized it in a chronological order. So these are the earliest, from all the way from the early first three generations, going to the later generations. The works of Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Al Qayyim, Wafuddin Ibn Qudama, Lumat al Atiqad. So going all the way, Kitab al Tawheed, the one that they talk about Wahhabis, the one who wrote it, Muhammad al-Wahhab. These are his books and explanations. And all the way coming to our time, like Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan's book here. This is all on the Islamic creed. As you can see, I've run out of room. So that's why I showed you earlier, we're building a bigger room for the library. A lot of my books right now are in boxes because I just don't have room. These are different research subjects. Um, Darwinism. Uh, Darwinism? Yeah, I've got, this is Darwin's Doubt. Wait, see, are you, we didn't evolve from monkeys? We did not. And then Darwin's own theories. In fact, you know, it's funny. A lot of atheists don't realize Darwin was very racist and sexist. He actually wrote about how men Base? Are <laughs> uh, base? <laughs> you know. Uh, so he talked about how different races evolved higher than other races. Oh. And since most of our races would not be on the higher evolved one, it probably wasn't that based. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. But he did say that men are more involved than women. So base? <laughs> W. Darwin. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not supporting that. <laughs> All right. Um, wasn't he a Satanist and wasn't he kind of gay? I thought Charles Darwin was gay. I don't know. I, I don't know about sexuality, but this is uh, scientific works about uh, that. And these are books of Zuhud, which is like uh, how to be a better person, how to clean your heart, how to uh, you know, kind of not have jealousy and not have hatred, how to just. Uh, cleanse yourself from those diseases we call Zuhud and Tazkiyah that's that section right there so this is a, a quick intro into the library um, we could spend literally a few days just explaining the books but yeah uh, any it's questions? A few months to, re to read all these oh, that's books a, that's, a, that's a week at best that's a week? let's, yeah, say, let's take a little a little peek okay at my homework Tafsir Asadi. Okay. Okay. Oh, Bambakla. That must translate into Woo, yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it starts with Jihad, when Jihad refers to fighting. Although Jihad is often translated into English as Holy War, it must be noted that war has never been described as holy in any of Islam's primary texts or even early Islamic literature. Linguistically speaking, jihad is an Islamic term that applies to a broad spectrum of activities ranging from daily striving to meet the day's challenges to striving against one's desires and self to the struggle to provide for one's family. Okay. So... It's nice, right? When you... when you, you say commit jihad or do jihad? Perform jihad. When you perform jihad, yeah. can that be a, an act of sin? Well, I, I mean, it depends what you mean, right? Jihad is to make an effort, right? But if you're doing an Islamic jihad, you're doing something good. Not mm. sinful. Can I can I explain a story? Go for it. So I was playing chess in an Islamic country with somebody pretty high level, oh. and I have, was telling him that I was thinking about reverting. This is right when I first said my uh, shahada. Okay. Uh, and I'm sitting. I was telling him how I had a problem with Charlie Hebdo. I'm sure you okay. know yeah, about yeah, the story. Yeah. 2012. That's and I, he's like he, he wasn't familiar with this. So I was explaining that Charlie Hebdo was a satirical French newspaper, yeah. and they were doing disrespectful things, making yeah. drawings, and 
did really just and he said well, what were they doing were they drawing the, the prophet and I said yeah and they were drawing women in yeah, bad yeah, yeah. ways and then he, he said like what do they do what did they do what, what, what ended up happening I'm like well the whole Charlie Hebdo they, 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 they shot it up and I said I was like that was my problem with Islam that's why I didn't revert when I was younger I was interested mm-hmm. and I was like I, I don't like this and then I was explaining to this and he, he stands up from the chair he says, Alhamdulillah, like, <laughs> and he's just like, even though it's it's not in the Quran, it says that you shouldn't kill people, obviously, yeah. he still considered that an act of jihad. So, so again, Islamically, we have rules to jihad, right? And from the rules is, you don't take jihad in your own hands. Meaning that unless you're being attacked and you're defending yourself, when you do an offensive act of jihad, you need a leader, right? So it's not like everybody's like, like I can't just be like, I'm declaring jihad on Norway and just attack. That, that's not Islam, right? There's every one of these books has a whole chapter on how jihad has to be performed, meaning you don't kill women, you don't kill children, you don't kill the elderly. So when you walk into a building and just shoot up everybody, that that's against the rules of jihad. Okay, but there's I'll, I'll read the book and I'll figure yeah. it out. Okay, yeah. that's well, good. And ask you know, when you're reading and you, and you run into something you don't know, that's what I'm here for. Do you think that this is better to start with than the Quran? This is the Quran. This is? Yeah, it's an explanation of the Quran. It goes right? by the it, chapters. It'll, it'll, it'll take you... So this is just the beginning, right? So this... Uh, what, what if I just read the, the, the Quran? Yeah, so this is the same thing. See, this this is the Quran, and this is a very light oh. explanation. So it'll go through each verse, and then it'll go through a very light. So if you just read the Quran, like uh, the person you had met said, you might not understand some of the verses, right? Right. As a beginner. So this will give you a very light, easy to understand explanation. Right, okay. so it's just like reading the Quran, a little bit of commentary to make it easy for you. But who wrote this? A great scholar named Sheikh Abdurrahman Nasir Al Saadi. And does everybody agree that he's trustworthy? I mean, uh, I can't speak for everybody. It was almost two billion Muslims, but right. he's well known and well accredited and well accepted across the Muslim world. And this book has been translated into many different languages, including Urdu and English. Um, if you go to most countries. Um, and you speak to very knowledgeable scholars from Kuwait and Qatar and Saudi and Egypt and so on and Jordan, they will find this to be a very uh, a credible and acceptable work, right? Okay. And that's why I gave you a good, simple beginning work because those books simple. that go into... Yeah, simple. One more time, chat, to show how his simple reading for Sheikh Uthman. This is Harry Potter 1 through 38 <laughs> that I have to go through. Pe- people read all that nonsense. Uh, Harry you know, Potter, Harry the Sorcerer. Potter. What's, that? What's that other, like, uh, the one of the ring and all that, right? Yeah, yeah. The people spend all that kind of useless time. This is this is getting closer to your Lord. This, this, this literally is an easy read. I could have given you some complicated book. Like this here is Ibn Kathir in English. I was thinking about giving this to you, right? But this is a little bit difficult. It, it, you need a well, little. That's just one book. Uh, yeah, that's one book. Hmm. And this is a oh, bridge. Oh. This, this is a summary, right? Sheikh Uthman, I, I got to be honest. I don't know if you know what one book means. Uh, oh, this is one book. Yeah, it's ten volumes, but it's one book. I, I'm not sure we agree. Maybe there's an <laughs> Islamic <laughs> definition of book, but that's not one. It's fine. Th- this here is one book, but it's twenty-four volumes. He doesn't understand. More. This here uh, 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 is one book. <laughs> no, and and this is a fun read book, by the way. No, <laughs> this is thirty six volumes. Uh, and you read all this. Uh, so these kinds of books, you don't really read cover to cover. This is a subject based tafsir, right? So meaning, when I'm researching a particular subject, I'll go and I'll find that subject and I'll read it. There's no book in here that I haven't benefited from, that I haven't read. But it, but I don't mean that I've read them cover to cover. What percentage of this library do you think you've read? Yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah, never really. Uh, to me, this is fun. I don't do this for, you know, like records and stuff. I, this, this, is, this is my little piece of heaven on earth, right? This is the place where you have the knowledge that can get you to paradise uh, about your Lord, about the rulings, about how to live, how to be a better person. So this is, you know, uh, sometimes I'm researching a certain subject and I'll sit and I'll read through a couple of volumes. Uh, in a night, you know, and sometimes I'll just pick up with a couple of papers and that's all I need. So, you know, this is not really something that I sit and I go, okay, I'm going to read this book from here to here, right? I recognize this uh, up here. I don't know if I can stand here. Uh, this is... Fiqh. Jami al-Fiqh. This amazing work. There's a great scholar of the past called Ibn al-Qayyim. Uh, if, you, if you're Muslim and you know 
Ibn al-Qayyim, you got to read his works. Is this the, the sign that they, is this the, the sign that they have in the masjid? Uh, no, that's just this is fiqh, which means understanding. Right? Okay. Yeah, but the writing in Arabic is like, kind of like the ones you see in a lot of masajid and things. Okay. Like this is one book that's collected from one scholar's work, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Great, amazing scholar. So they, they've collected from his works, his works, uh, like an introduction, his life, his, his uh, writings on Islamic belief, his writings on jurisprudence all the way here, his writings in hadith, his writings in the biographies of those narrators that I was showing you earlier, uh, Adab and Zuhud and Cleansing the Heart, Tables of Contents. So this is an amazing, amazing work. This is called Al-Mughni. But this, this, this are the same book. But I had this one and a better print came out so I had to buy it. And uh, this is uh, the, one of the greatest books of fiqh ever written by a scholar called Ibn Qudama. And again, if you're not Muslim, you at least have to appreciate the scholarly work of the great Muslim scholars. Mm -hmm. How did we preserve the Qur'an, the meaning of the Qur'an, the Arabic of the Qur'an, how we check the statements of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. This is, this is the work that goes into it. Thank you for the tour. I really appreciate My this pleasure. on a Saturday night. Chat, people could be, right now, I, I couldn't stop thinking about that on the drive home from the Masjid. It's a Saturday night, I'm very used to, I'll just like, in my head, I, I'm trained to be like, okay, Saturday night, I need to be drinking alcohol, listening to Haram music in the club right now. Like, that's where I, I need to be, just because. Saturday the, night, you'd have a nice cup of tea and a good library and a good book, and you need to be doing some light reading. Light reading. Well, we, we had a, a great time. We had a, we had some good food. And tell good me conversation. This, how many of the young people, how many young people do you see in the masjid today? So many. So and many lot, children. How many reverts? A lot right? of reverts. So this is the beautiful very environment diverse. that we have. Diverse. A lot of reverts. A lot of young people. Saturday night, they could be anywhere, but they were in the mosque. Uh, you know, we really appreciated you coming. And alhamdulillah, you brought a good energy. And like I said, you're always welcome. This is this is your home. This is your city. This is your masjid. MashaAllah. Thank you, Shaykh Uthman. Shout out to One Message Foundation.